Christian, are you ready to stand up for what you believe in? Let's talk about that. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Standing Still, where I speak the truth in love, because, of course, speaking the truth is love. I am your friend Jason, also known as Tyndale's Beard, and I hope everybody had a great and wonderful weekend. I hope you're going to have a great 4th of July tomorrow. Uh, listen, when it comes to the 4th of July, I personally am not going to be celebrating as much as I usually have in the past. I'm more of in a state of mourning for our country and the direction that it's headed. I do think at this point, if you don't realize that our country is heading some bad directions, you have to be willfully blind or just plain ignorant. Uh, the things that are coming up in this country are not good for Christians, not good for freedom. And I want to talk today about what we're going to, what, or what we should do, what we're supposed to do in a situation like that. Because we in America really haven't faced persecution by and large uh, for a long time. A long, long time. And I think it's coming. And I'm talking about, of course, legal persecution, government persecution of Christians. I think that's around the, around the bend, okay? That's on the horizon. And it's coming. Uh, for example, I don't know if you guys have heard about this legislation in Michigan. I think it just passed their house. And basically, they're going to make it a hate crime if somebody feels threatened or attacked or marginalized or whatever like that. And, of course, that includes, you know, all this gender politics, right? This gender identity and, you know, if you, if you question somebody on that or you say that's not what they are, then there you go. You, you could face a fine or prison or, or who knows what. So I'm not going to get too much into the details on that. You can definitely go Google that and check that out for yourself. Uh, but so what are we as Christians to do? Okay, because in Ephesians 5, chapter 11, the scripture commands us that we are not to have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So what do we do? Well, we can look at a couple of examples that we have in scripture. Okay, and the first one is in the book of Acts uh, with Peter and John. And uh, they're preaching and teaching and the authorities come at them and say, hey, hey, you guys need to shut up. You know, stop your preaching, stop your teaching. And here's, here's what the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verses 18 through 20. It says, And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Okay, so the authorities told them, You need to quit. And... Their attitude was, okay, but we're not gonna, though. You know? Um, the next example in Scripture that we can look at is one of my personal favorites, and it's the same basic uh, premise. Uh, so in the book of Daniel, the king Nebuchadnezzar has set up an image of gold, and all the people of Babylon were given a choice. Okay, they could worship this image when they were told, or they could get burned alive, okay? So real-world government consequences for standing up for themselves. And uh, there were three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that the Bible tells us flat-out refused. And the king got very angry with them about it. And this incident is recorded in Daniel chapter 3. And uh, so here's what happens, right? Starting in verse 15, the king tells them, says, Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made, well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast in the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Now guys, get this, okay? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're going to answer him. And it's it's a mic drop moment, all right? Check it out. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, 
Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Okay, so notice, I mean, get a load of their response here. So they tell him that God is able to deliver him, able to deliver them, that he would deliver them. And then they said, even if God doesn't deliver us, we're still not going to do this thing. We're still not going to bend the knee. And so, Christian, our response needs to be the same. We need that kind of conviction. We need to have that kind of conviction. You say, Jason, how can I do that? This is scary. When the government says that they're going to do things to me if I, if I stand up for the truth, what, what am I going to do? That's a scary thing. How will I do it? Listen, if you're born again, if you're a child of God, right, then you need to rest Simply rest in the fact that God is who he says he is and that he can do what he says he can do. Okay? Listen, if your job, your family, your friends, society, the government comes along and tells you to disobey God, your answer simply needs to be no. I'm going to keep doing what God tells me to do, keep doing it the way God tells me to do it. And that's all there is. That's all there is to it, okay? Um... And it, it really is, guys. It, it's just a matter of trusting the Lord. For instance, taking the job situation, right? You might have a job that tells you that you have to come in and work on Sundays and they don't want you uh, taking time off for church and family and all that sort of thing. You got to come in and work because that's they and a lot of times they'll tell you that's what's fair to everybody else, right? They'll never tell you the truth is that they got a lot of people who don't care about church and they could very easily work on Sundays. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. Point being, you might have a job that tells you that. So what do you do in that situation? Well, we're not supposed to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Uh, in fact, we're supposed to be in church all the more as we see the day approaching, right? That's what scripture tells us. So what do you do? Well, Christian, go to church. Obey God. Do what's right. But you say, Jason, what am I going to do? That's my livelihood. Listen, Christian, is God your provider or is your job your provider? Now, I made the decision a while ago. I am going to be faithful to what God tells me to do. And I'm going to go be in church if God tells me to go be in church. If my job tells me no, I'm not going to go. You say, well, I'll get fired. Well, then you'll get fired. Okay? It's just that simple. God is your provider, not your job. It's that simple. And the same thing is true with government persecution. When the, If the government's going to come down on us, it's going to come down on us. We have a choice. We can live in fear and not do what God commands us to do. Or we can live in faith and trust and do what God wants us to do. We can trust God, we can live for God, and we don't have to sit here and twiddle our thumbs and, and shake and, and just live in fear of what everybody's going to do to us. Listen, the world can't do anything to us that God doesn't allow. So as long as you're right with the Lord, as long as you have a right relationship with Him, then you can tell the world, take your best shot. So, hey, listen, thank you guys so much for washing. Um, washing? Yeah, I mean, I hope you wash, but whatever. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please take time to like this video and subscribe if you haven't done that already. Also, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, always looking to interact with you a little bit more. Uh, I am also going to be leaving the link for my Spreadshirt store down below. I've got some really cool shirts. In fact, I'm going to be wearing one in one of my next videos here. Uh, show it off a little bit. I think i got some cool stuff that you guys will really enjoy. So please go check that out. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. I hope you have a great uh, holiday tomorrow. And guys, I will catch you next time.